Hello my soccer universe, doing this very early because I don't have much time and uh, because we are, I'll be out most of the day today so let's get this video in, it may post a little bit late, it may post early, I don't know yet how uh, the morning will go but I'm doing this right early in the morning, too much time already lost. You have not realized it, I'm wearing a brand new England shirt it is part of an unpacking video that will come on Friday. So if you're watching this, you see this one first. To me, Nike's best work for England. And you read the thumbnail, Croatia, not dead yet. Uh, many people were singing swan songs on this Croatia team. I didn't necessarily do so and I didn't necessarily uh, defend them. So I was kind of on the fence on the whole thing. Uh, but Croatia actually arrived at the tournament and showed a good performance against Scotland and they are moving on as well. Um, let's go into the other games. I mean, I actually had the choice this time, that time around because German TV showed Czechs against England, Austrian TV showed Croatia against Scotland and for some reason, you know, I prefer uh, German TV so I watched uh, first half Czechs against England and I think I was a little bit vindicated for, for the choice, at least at, at the beginning, because England started out brightly. Um, Sterling had already a pretty good chance early, early on where he lobs Vachlik and it just hits the uh, post for the third time in a row. Uh, England hits the post. I think that's why the goal difference doesn't look that pretty, because if all those chances would, would have gone in, I think England would look a whole lot prettier. Um, the goal then comes from a really nicely uh, worked play where uh, I think Saka initiated the ball that comes on the other side to Grealish who lobs it nicely across the goal mouth uh, to Sterling who had, had it in and gets his second goal for uh, England. England only, uh, the only goal scores for England are Sterling and England looked well on the way but then like in the Croatia game uh, where they scored later, but um, you know, they kind of backed off. The Czechs got a little bit into the play, had a pretty good chance by Suchek to equalize. Uh, and you know, if the Czechs would have gotten a draw that they win the group. Um, but then I kind of the game was fizzling out, and I decided for the second half I'm gonna watch Croatia Scotland. From what I hear, uh, is that England in the second half also started out again a little bit more on the front foot. Um, but then kind of managed the game to a group win and staying at Wembley. And I said it before, I don't think this is the wrong choice. A, you can stay in your camp. B, you will be in the nicer part of the bracket. Yes, you will get a pretty tough opponent in the next round. However, Wembley will have 45,000. Uh, fun, fun fact, I actually tried to look if there are tickets to Wembley for uh, Italy, Austria. There were none. Uh, not that I really would, would, would have gone, but I, I, I just wanted to see. And then the warning came, came in from uh, Austria. Yeah, don't not travel to England because of the Delta variant. Go figure. Uh, in any case, so the England hangs on to win that group. That means also the Czechs were in danger of losing second place if Croatia should win by two, which is exactly what they uh, did. Uh, Scotland, of course, needed a win. I mean, it was a really interesting game. Um, whoever wins that game moves on, and if it's a draw, Ukraine moves on. So, I mean, that was kind of the three-way. Usually, when it's those three-way things, uh, you get one winner uh, in the game. Um, I think Scotland from uh, started out well, had a few chances, and then Croatia scores in the 17th through uh, Vlasic, uh, assisted by Perisic, uh, was a, a, a well-worked goal in, uh, in, in, in many ways and from that moment on Croatia had firmly control of the game. However, Scotland gets back in, 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 into the game and, and then it's McGregor who gets the first goal at a big tournament since 98. Well, they haven't qualified since 98 so it's not that big of a statistic but at least uh, we have now. Uh, another Scottish goal scorer at a big tournament in over two decades, uh, non nonetheless. And you think with that, Scotland will just have enough to move forward and get uh, something going. Second half, no, Croatia did it. Croatia really registered uh, very well uh, with in the second half, uh, kept Scotland Bay, took control of the midfield, and then if you have Modric scoring such a wonderful goal, you know, uh, played in the path by Kovacic and then Modric just with the outer sweet strike. Uh, 
if there was a shit goal, another contender, uh, contender for a goal of the tournament, I think for a sheer technique, absolutely brilliant, 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 brilliant goal. And then I think Croatia was not really sweating. I mean, there was uh, one half chance for Scotland, um, where uh, I think it was McGinn who slammed in, in, into the Croatian goalkeeper. Modric sets up Perisic and it's 3-1 and Croatia are also through as are the Czechs thanks to the results already yesterday. So uh, summarizing, we have Croatia winning over Scotland with the Czechs uh, losing to England and with that goal Croatia already moves into second place. So we have the Czechs falling back in third. As you will see this is not all that bad. All three are qualified. Ukraine's chances of qualifying went down by 10%. In a way, Finland only to 1%. 1%. We have to see how the other uh, groups uh, pan out today, especially Group E. There is a chance for Ukraine maybe to kind of stay ahead of one of these, uh, maybe even Group F, if, uh, but uh, that might be a little, a little bit harder. At the moment, I, it is... Ukraine just in there, but you know, Finland for sure, but then Will Spain stay there? Mm, unlikely, unlikely, one has to say. Um, let's look at uh, the three at the moment. We have only two matchups confirmed, and that was also yes, between Wales and Denmark, Italy, Austria. However, uh, we have Croatia and England now waiting their opponents. England again, second place team of Group uh, F, and Croatia uh, first place, uh, first place team, no, second place team of Group E. So let's see how this pans out. Um, projections we don't need to project much in the first half second half we have sweden spain slovakia uh, and france germany portugal and as for our third place teams ukraine and finland missing out so portugal the czech switzerland slovakia which would mean the three would look as follows or the bracket uh belgium slovakia waited yesterday croatia would play against spain england against germany that's a big one right there um and uh who are the Czechs would not play against Sweden. I envy the Czechs a little bit because, you know, it's nice to play Wembley in Italy, but... Um, Sweden sounds like a more beatable opponent, but, you know, Austria would have lost probably against both, to be honest. Um, as for England, I really think they're the better uh, draw because then you would play Sweden. Uh, the one thing with England that I have to say, I think they're looking forward because all the opponents that have were rather sitting deep and unless you play Grealish, who is maybe the one who is really adept at, you know, um, dribbling through uh, an opponent, I think playing a little bit more open might, uh, or an open opponent might play into England's favor. Um, because the defense looks kind of solid, but again, it also has not been tested. Uh, I think at the moment, the best thing that you can say about England, that they have not really exerted themselves, having a very tired squad that might actually work in their favor. And I think uh, South Korea is all about managing the tournament. I think if, as we see in the bracket, if England goes over Germany with home field advantage should be possible because the German backline is also very vulnerable and the attack intelligence that England has, I could see it. Then England might make it easy, easily all the way to the final. Whether they beat Belgium there or France or whoever will come there, then that's a, a slightly diff different question. But um, I think England has a pretty good chance of winning the tournament now. Speaking of chances, let's look at them. England moving up into second spot. Yes, you play against a tough opponent in the next round where you have all, where I don't have like a, a huge chance of, of advancing bar home field advantage, but then it gets a whole lot easier uh, moving forward. So uh, England moving into second place there. The Dutch now also go ahead of Spain and Por Portugal no, uh, now that we have some certainty. The Netherlands also potentially could have a similar story as uh, England uh, having to play probably third place team from Group F. Uh, and Croatia moving up all the way to 11th. <laughs> Austria still down there because of Italy. Um, as for today, we have the last few group games finishing up early on. Slovakia, Spain, Sweden, Poland. I think Sweden, Poland probably the pick uh, 
unless you have enough uh, coffee in, in, in you to be able to stand another Spain performance. It's all about the evening and I think Portugal-France is the match up to pick. Although uh, Germany-Hungary also it's kind of a game for the last spot, so it will be interesting. I'll be watching for sure. In any case, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. How do you like England's and Croatia's chances? Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.